So Judas, the hammer, <coughs> leads this revolt against uh, the Syrians. And amazingly, in time, he wins. I mean, he, he beats the, the Syrian, i.e. Greek army, with this ragtag a bunch of rebels that he raised in the Judean countryside. And as a result, uh, from 141 to 37 BC is the rule of the Hasmonean dynasty in Palestine. This will be the only time from 700 BC until 1948 that Israel rules their own country. Now think about that for a moment. From 700 BC to 1948, this is the only period that the Jews have governmental control over their own territory. Isn't that amazing? Because think about it, you know, 700 BC, the Assyrians take over the northern kingdom. Uh, the mid 500s BC, uh, Nebuchadnezzar takes over the southern kingdom. Uh, eventually they're allowed to return, but then uh, they're still under the rule of, of Cyrus of Persia, and then eventually Alexander the Great comes along and the Seleucids take over, or the Ptolemies, uh, and, and who, who's over Israel by the time of Jesus? The Romans. So the Romans are in charge by that point. So this is the only period in that uh, 2,500, 2,600 year period, think about that, that the Jews have governmental control over their own homeland. And uh, the Hasmonean dynasty uh, starts out with the, the three brothers uh, who are sons of Mattathias the priest. And the first one is, is Judas, but Judas eventually dies in battle. The most important one out of the three is Jonathan. And Jonathan rules for a long time, but Jonathan <coughs> does something that has never happened before in the whole thousands of years history of Judaism. He's never done it before. What he does is he makes himself the political leader, but he also makes himself the high priest. So think about it. If you go back to the Old Testament. So much for church and state. Yeah, yeah so much for the separation of church and state. Uh, his family is not descended from the Levites. They're not descended from Aaron and Moses. So they really don't have any business being the famous moment of, of uh, Israeli history. Think... Uh, the time of King David and the time of uh, his son Solomon. Well, David and Solomon were the political leaders. They were the kings, right? Were they also the high priests? No. no. Who was the high priest under Solomon? <coughs> Zadok. So as we go along here and we start talking about the sectarians or who may have been the Essenes, you're going to start to see some phrases that hopefully now that we've had this introduction are going to start to make sense because the Essenes never called themselves the Essenes. Essenes simply means the pious ones. So that was probably a descriptor that other people gave to them rather than what they called themselves. They called themselves generally two things in the scrolls. They called themselves the sons of light, and they called themselves the sons of Zadok. Who was Zadok? He was the high priest under Solomon. Well, this starts to give us some very fascinating clues, and I will leave it at that, but keep that in mind as we go, uh, go through this. See, was it the original desecration of the temple that caused the, uh, they created the Hanukkah? Yes, it is. Absolutely. When Judas Maccabeus takes back the temple, there's a big uh, ceremony, and they reconsecrate the, the temple, and that is still uh, celebrated today as, uh, as Hanukkah. Good point, Steve. <laughs> Absolutely. So if you're ever, you know, in a bar or at a party or something and people start talking about, so can you name all seven of the Jewish feasts during the course of a year? You will remember Hanukkah because of its relation to this course. See how helpful is it? You still got the other six, but still. Uh, so it's, it's possible that Jonathan's taking over the priesthood when he is not descended from Aaron, he's not a, Le a Levite. It's possible that him taking <coughs> that role is what causes this group to get so ticked off that they leave the
the temple and they go out into the desert and they form a new religious group. They take their ball and go home. Take their ball and go home. And it's interesting that 2,000 years later they are speaking so strongly to us. It's, it's, you never know how things are going to work out. And then I will, uh, we might as well do these and then uh, uh, we'll, we'll get to the discovery. 63 BC, there's a new dictator in town. Pompey annexes Palestine, and that's all she wrote for the next several hundred years. The Romans will control Israel. 68 AD, the last of the Dead Sea Scrolls are written, but the bulk of them are written uh, from the time of Jonathan up until the time of Christ. So from about 134 BC, say, up until the time of Christ is when the vast bulk of the scrolls are written. And June in 69 AD, according to Josephus, um, Vespasian had a garrison at Jericho, and Jericho was, what, eight miles, 12 miles away? Uh, so miles. according to Josephus, Vespasian has a, a garrison at Jericho. Um, in, the, in, the, uh, in 68 or 69, Vespasian takes over Qumran and destroys it. So, that's the end of the Essenes in history. They poof, <laughs> they're gone after that. Uh, and it's a little confusing because it was Vespasian who took over Qumran, but then it was his son who took uh, over uh, Jerusalem and destroyed the temple. Well, Vespasian was made emperor uh, after he invaded uh, Israel, and so he turned over his generalship to his son, and that's why it's Titus uh, who took the temple. 